Hi. Today we're here to talk about the second part of financial markets, or insurance, which, mind you, includes both the formal insurance market, such as when you go and buy health insurance or life insurance, uh, but also many of the functions of financial intermediaries, like banks, are really insurance functions, where they assume some of the risk of an activity, giving you a guaranteed income in exchange for some of your prop, your income, which we call premiums. This all comes from what economists call risk aversion, where people discount future returns that are risky. So they have less value, they ascribe less value to returns with more risk. Um, for example, um, let's say you have a choice of $10 now or a 50% chance of 0 or $20. Now, in expected value terms, these are equivalent. $10 is the expected value of a 50% risk of 0 or $20. Most people, however, will choose the $10 over the equivalent expected value. In fact, most people would choose less than $10 over that 50% risk. People would often choose $10 now instead of a 50% chance of 0 or $25, even though the gamble of 0 or $25 is in expected value worth more. This is because reverse. They want security rather than a chance of a bigger payoff. This is why people buy insurance and it comes from diminishing marginal utility which says that things that are really really good like getting lots and lots of money is worth less to us than something that has a determined safe amount of money. So if you have a risk of a really good thing or a really bad thing, you would rather have the thing in between. You could see this that the expected value, the, the average, the weighted average of C and zero is going to be somewhere less than the utility curve with the actual amount of money. So if you take a line between C and A, for example, here's A and here's C, that line represents the expected value points of all gambles that would give you either A or C. Higher values associated with higher probabilities of getting C. Lower values associated with lower probabilities of getting C. And a higher probability of getting A. That line runs below the utility curve because of diminishing marginal utility. That means that the expected value of your utilities from a gamble is less than the utility you would get by having a determined, definite amount of money. All the time. Um, what happens is companies will be risk neutral. Companies anticipate doing lots and lots of these gambles. And if you do lots and lots of these gambles and you don't really care if sometimes you end up low because you know you're often going to end up there, then companies will say, okay, I would like to have more money, more expected value without regard to the, util the diminishing marginal utility. So if you have a gamble with um, a possibility of getting 
um, something really high up here or a risk of something getting really low down here, you would look upon that expected value, say, um, A, as being less than the value of if you actually had that this amount of money. Your utility is going to be higher if you have a guarantee of money, even if it's less than what you'd get. Expected value of this gamble might be over A, that's in dollars. The utility associated with that is going to be down here, way less than the utility you would get with a definite amount of money. B, the utility of the expected value is going to be something way less than if you could have a guaranteed amount of money. This is the opportunity the company has to sell you insurance. The company will say, hey, we'll give you some less money, but guaranteed. This money, $7,700, is significantly less than the expected value of the situation, but it still gives you higher utility than you would get from the gamble. If your utility increases with the square root of your income, for example, u equals y to the one-half. This should be square root, not squared. Square root. The expected value of a gamble of 0 to $20 at 50% chance is the, expect, the expected income is $10. The expected utility is, $3, is the equivalent of $3.17. The expected utility from the gamble with a 50% chance is only 223. This is the average of the utility at zero and the utility at $20. The average is only $2.23. So you would say, well, this is the utility I'd get for $5 guaranteed income. You would say, okay, I would just as soon have $5 of guaranteed income rather than a gamble with an expected value of $10. This allows a company to sell you insurance. They could sell you insurance at $10 premium and you'd be like, fine. Um, that's $10 premium. I'm guaranteed $10 all the time. I'm fine. But the insurance could also sell you a premium more than $10. You would pay as much as $15 for insurance because even at a premium of $15, your utility is higher than a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. You will give up an extra bird to be sure of having something definite. Because those two bush, two birds, what are you going to do with the second bird? Not as good as the first bird. Risk-neutral financial intermediaries can profit from this. They spread the risk among a large number of gambles, so it becomes virtually predictable risk. They don't care. They're fine, even if they lose a bunch, because they know they're going to win more in the future. And in the meantime, they are pocketing your premiums at a higher premium cost than the fair market value of the insurance. Nothing wrong with this. They're taking the risk. You don't want the risk. You're happier. They're happier. Next time, we're going to talk about asymmetric information, where we do have something wrong. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.